let the money speak. Of course, insights do not in themselves uh, are not worth anything. You cannot be mean, useful to have, but what really speaks is of course money or or a uh, customer experience. Welcome to Process Pioneers, the show that takes a deep dive into the minds of decision makers, key influencers, and process experts who are pioneering the world of everything process. Welcome to another episode of Process Pioneers. My name is Daniel Rayner. I'm the host of Process Pioneers. And in each of these episodes, I have the absolute privilege of sitting down with various uh, BPM professionals, specialists, practitioners. I get to sit down with people um, from large enterprises, large organizations. I get to sit down with consultants and I get to sit down with people from the academic realm as well. Um, as we dive into this topic of business process management and everything that sort of comes under that banner. And today, I have the absolute uh, privilege of sitting down with Sander Lehmans. Now, uh, some of you may uh, be familiar with Sander, but Sander is a lecturer and assistant professor at QUT uh, with a focus on a number of different topics, process mining, process discovery, business process management, business process improvement, and uh, robotic process automation. Uh, so I'm very excited for, for this interview. Sander, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me, Daniel. Pleasure to be here. So one thing that my uh, the audience of Process Pioneers loves to find out is when were you first introduced uh, to, and the, the topic that we're really going to focus on here is uh, process mining. I know that you, you've got an interest, obviously, in a number of different areas, but I would love to dive into this process mining topic because I think it's something that a lot of people are talking about at the moment. So when were you first introduced to this topic of process mining and take us on a bit of a journey leading up to what you're doing today? Sure. Um, I got uh, introduced to it by uh, in my in my bachelor already in uh, Eindhoven in the Netherlands, where I was uh, taught by uh, Wil van der Aalst, who is kind of the, the godfather of our field. Um, and then, uh, yeah, didn't do much with it up until my PhD, uh, where which I did with him as well. Um, so yeah, it, it really started during my PhD, in which I developed several uh, techniques for process mining uh, that are still uh, in use today. And after that, I, uh, I moved here to, to Brisbane, Australia at uh, Queensland University of Technology, QT. Um, and yeah, I'm uh, uh, slowly progressed the ranks and now I'm yeah, assistant professor on, uh, on this topic that I still enjoy working on every day. <laughs> that's amazing that's fantastic and and um great to hear that you were you know you were taught by will van der Aals. we we had him on a an episode a, a couple of months back and you know certainly gleaned a lot from that that conversation will's you know obviously has a depth and, and wealth of experience and knowledge in this topic um you know having been looking into process mining or being a part of process mining for 20 or 30 years now i think it is um, quite some time uh, a lot long time before all of this hype has sort of popped up over the last few years but um for an organization um that is um i guess considering or looking into process mining um, or had maybe has already adopted process mining what are the biggest drivers uh, for adopting process mining i think the biggest drivers uh for uh, for adopting process mining is um like there are processes running in an organization, so kind of the, the, the typical uh, BPM setting. Um, and if you want to know what is actually going on uh, within the processes, or you want to see why customers are um, unhappy about processes, or um, you want to know are there any inefficiencies, or you notice um, there are bottlenecks, uh, or things are taking longer than, than they should, um, or just in general, can I optimize anything? Um, then I think you end up really quickly in, in process mining territory. So um, process mining can then help to, to identify where uh, problems are, um, and it can help you to, uh, to, to pinpoint and, and do root cause analysis, all these, all these kind of things, um, in order to find out where, where uh, inefficiencies in your processes are. And well, of course, that has existed uh, for a long time in, 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 in BPM, but um, yeah, with process mining, um, we try to take kind of the, the, human, uh, the human bias out of the loop. So we, we try to do that based on data uh, and finding uh, things from the data that an organization um, already has. So I think, yeah, that's one of the biggest drivers for, for adopting process mining is, is transparency. What is actually going on in my organization? 
Right, right. And, and would you say that um, taking that human bias out of the equation, is that, is that really the biggest difference between, um, I guess, what we know as process mining today and, and traditional BPM? Um, because we, we do have a lot of uh, listeners um, in this, on this series or listening to the series that will have come from organisations where, yeah, we've done discovery work, we've, we've held workshops before, we've got everyone together to understand what our processes are. Um, what's, what's, what, I guess, what has changed? What's the big difference and what's the big step up from traditional BPM to what process mining is doing today? Um, just just maybe to cor to correct myself a little bit um it's not we we are not unbiased i mean data has uh, has its own bias of course but um for uh kind of the, the big the big step up is that um rather than than getting the information from people we get it from information systems so we we take um what has been uh, logged in the information systems of the organization um, and uh, go from there. So we, we uh, no, of course, there's still uh, there's still interpretation and uh, and, uh, uh, and 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 humans, uh, human analysts and domain experts involved. But um, yeah, once you've done an interview, once you've done uh, an interview uh, series, and um, you have you have created a, a business process model in BPM, then. Um, you do not know yet whether there are any uh, any bottlenecks or whether there are resources that are uh, severely overloaded or underutilized. And that is the thing that by using process mining, maybe even after um, uh, you've, you've gone through the, the effort of, uh, uh, of, of process discovery uh, in the BPM sense, um, maybe even after that, you can, you can apply process mining to see where problems are and where processes could be improved. Great, great. And uh, I guess in, in adopting uh, process mining as part of an organization's uh, toolkit, um, what are some of the biggest challenges that um, they could potentially face by adopting process mining or um, exploring process mining? Um, yeah, we, we've actually done uh, uh, just a, a, recent, uh, a recent study on that. Um, so the, the biggest uh, challenges uh, that organizations face while doing process mining is um, on, on one hand, the data must be there. It must be kind of, yeah, um, dig out in, in, in mining terms. Um, so the, the, the data might be there, but it is uh, usually far from, from trivial and far from, from easy to, to get that into a shape that you can use it in a, in a process mining tool. Um, but also there must be uh, capability building and, of course, yeah, buy-in from, uh, from management um, in order for people to kind of start um, uh, doing their, uh, that, like they're analyzing their own processes. Because yeah, traditionally BPM was about uh, like you know centers of excellence and, and building uh, like uh, specialized BPM uh, departments um, that would go into the organization and, and help uh, process participants to optimize their processes. But one of the promises of process mining is that it's kind of yeah almost democratized. Um, so that um, if you if you have that set up, and we have been in organizations where where they were uh, actually on on the way to do that, that they wanted to decentralize um, the process optimization because yeah, of, of course, a, a BPM um, department can make yeah maybe maybe two or maybe five processes at the same time can be optimized, but if you give everybody in the organization the access to these tools and of course, a little bit of training, um, then yeah, you have, you have the potential to reach much further um, in terms of, uh, of where you can go. And, and then that, that might have um, uh, much more, much larger, uh, let's say, benefits to the organization. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. And, and it reminds me of a conversation I had maybe a week or two ago now where um, there's an organization down in um, New South Wales in Sydney. Um, uh, well, it's a, it's a national organization, but they, um, you know, they recognize that we have limited resources in our process team. Um, so how can we multiply um, the impact um, or, or the work that we can do? Well, we need to empower um, the people. We need to empower subject matter experts. Um, we, we can't be the bottleneck 
to improving processes, um, we've actually got to bring them all together um, or, or have some sort of forum, some sort of way we can collaborate and, and work with them um, so that we're actually empowering them to go out into their different area, into the different areas of the business um, and, and carrying out those process improvement initiatives themselves. Um, and, and, and they've been running, I think, since the end, end of last year. And I, I just caught up with them a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's incredible what you can do when you're empowering your people um, to, you know, to, to be out there, to be the hands and feet of the pro process initiative. Um, uh, because these subject matter experts and especially the process participants, they're probably in the best position to identify, you know, what, what's working well, what isn't working well, um, how can we improve, what do we need to, to focus on? But I, I guess a, a big question in a lot of people's minds that haven't jumped into process mining yet is, um, are organisations actually using it? Um, are, are they using it now or is it just a lot of uh, fluff, a lot of hype, a lot of talk? Uh, are organisations just sort of, um, you know, getting excited about this thing that hasn't actually been put into practice, embedded into an organisation? So do you have a couple of examples where process mining has been embedded into an organisation and it is actually delivering significant value? Um, yeah, sure. So... Um... Uh, in one of the the, uh, the, the case studies we did, um, we we did not do the, the process mining ourselves, but we looked how are uh, how is it being like kind of rolled out in the organization, um, and um, at the the moment we were doing that, um, uh, it, this this was uh, kind of a semi uh, governmental organization in the Netherlands, and they what what their uh, yeah, they, they quickly found out that, that if they had a process team, then um, yeah, that I mean they were they were doing they were doing good work and it was recognized by management, but it wouldn't scale because you know after in, in BPM it is well known after you've optimized the process, um, you, yeah, you cannot just leave it there and yeah hope it will. <laughs> I mean the environment changes uh, the, the the process itself. Uh, will need to change as well or people start uh, like you know finding uh, ways around block roadblocks that you put in place so at some point you need to look at it again um and it was it was clear that uh, that that such a such a single department would not be able to scale um so that's why they um and they put an, and they, they bought a site lens a, a site license of Salonis, and they were trying to give every to to train so that they changed the process department from doing the work to training other uh, the organization to do that so they uh, yeah they, they worked with uh, with dashboards and they were trying to to uh, teach like key people within uh, within organ within let's say other departments like the where the yeah the the core processes were running um in order to uh to train them and to uh to to make sure that they could themselves uh analyze their own processes and see yeah optimize them because yeah as, as, you, as you mentioned daniel the um the key people that can that can decide whether something is 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 a bottleneck or a problem or an inefficiency um that is not in that knowledge is not in the process department that knowledge is in the domain experts and the um and the process participants they know where where things are going wrong so their strategy was to uh, to to put process mining into the hands of those people um the um, for uh, some other uh, some for some other projects where we've done where where we actually did um, the, uh, the the uh, the actual process mining analysis so we we, we extracted the data we did the analysis um, however that that plan was uh, or we were brought into that organization it was a governmental organization here in Australia. Um, we were brought in in order to to kind of give the, the team a little bit of a, of a head start on the topic like what are they looking for what is it what is process mining so yeah they were um, of course they were they were happy with what we found and of course we uh, we helped them optimize this uh, helped them optimize that particular process but what the, the key thing that they wanted to get out of that collaboration was to um, to optimize to 
to build capacity within the organization in order to make a more informed decision on what uh, what uh, process mining uh, tool that they wanted to to continue with. Mm. Right, right. And uh, just one question, I guess, that, that comes up um, when you're talking about that. You mentioned um, earlier um, about, uh, the, I think it was the, the um, organization in the Netherlands identified like a core process or a critical process um, to, to focus on initially. Um, I guess one question for people that um, might be, you, you may, may have piqued their interest and they want to dive into process mining, but where do you start? Um, how do you identify which processes to focus on um, first? Um, how do you know that, you know, you're not wasting your time focusing over here when you should be focusing over here? Yeah, unfortunately, that, that part is, um, uh, is, is kind of in the, in the BPM uh, field. Um, that part is referred to as process uh, identification. Um, and uh, the, the kind of the, 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 the typical, uh, well, academic view on that is that, that you do that first before you start digging into um, like making, it, having interviews, extracting data. Um, so th that, that step is kind of, um, a little bit on the, yeah, on, on the first uh, door pole of uh, of, uh, of 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 uh, of process mining. Um, so we are uh, from us. We, we we are trying to automate that, but of course, um, they're beating uh, a well introduced management team. They know where their where their problems are, right? Right. Um, so there we can uh, we can we can of course assist with with data, um, but let's say that the core strength of process mining actually starts when you know okay we have this particular process and we want to look into that. So we, we are trying to also kind of break into that area, but um, for, uh, for for as, as far as my knowledge goes, that is still mostly a management. Pro a manual management process where you decide like, okay, this is a process that needs attention. This is where we can actually get value for our investment uh, because of course BPM is not cheap. Um, so there um, we, we, are, we are trying, but as far as I know, automation there is, is for now very limited. Yes, okay, okay. And um, when, when diving into process mining, how do you know what's possible. Uh, I've heard a number of different case studies um, where an organization, say a hospital, um, has um, adopted process mining, um, but really weren't aware of how broken their processes were. Um, for example, they took one, uh, one uh, case, I think it is, or, or one, um, one process, um, yeah, they took one process, they analyzed it. I think there were 1,500 cases. That's right, 1,500 cases and um, of this one process. And there ended up being 800 different variations of that process, which absolutely blew them away because they were like, we had no idea that like we were, our customers, our, our um, patients were going on such a complex um, and convoluted process. We actually thought it was a very simple process, but, you know, we're certainly not delivering a good customer or, or patient experience there. Um, so obviously when they were uh, trialing process mining that they weren't aware of what's possible. Um, it, it, does that tend to be the case when, when organizations adopt process mining, they actually don't know what their target is or, or what is possible? Or, or would you encourage uh, people to know you, sh you should be have, have some idea of what you're aiming for? Um, it, it largely depends. So um, also a little bit on the industry and also, of course, the, the background uh, or the, the familiarity of, of, uh, of, of our contact person that is uh, that, that um, about process mining. So if you if you talk about insurers, um, we do work, we do work a lot with them. Um, a process is is pretty much clear because there are all kinds of of laws that they have to adhere to, and they want to they want to make sure that they stay on the good side of the law. So they have right. a, they, they they are fully aware of of, of processes, and um, there um, it's it's much more about finding uh, places to optimize rather than. And, and inefficiencies rather than what does my process actually look like? Because that, that, 
that in itself would already be a big no-no for for uh, for such a for such an organization. Um, yeah, we've also kind of halfway the scale we've seen in uh, in in for instance universities and 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 to a lesser extent also schools um, that students can can follow several paths through the curriculum. There, do we um, actually um, finding just making that visual and, and to, to study that is already quite helpful for, for curriculum planners. Like, um, okay, this is because yeah, we have a core structure and students, we know the prerequisites, but um, how do students actually go through that curriculum? Um, so there you have already a, a little bit less, um, let's say, yeah, pre-existing knowledge about, about what process. Um, and yeah, the, um, uh, in, in, in healthcare, um, especially in emergency departments, um, yeah, there it is, it is a little bit more tricky because yeah, doctors um, um, follow, they, they do follow processes, but they can very, very massively um, uh, between patients. So we are... Uh, actually working working with hospitals uh, now in order to, to find that um, and um, the the goal is not to um, to to optimize the whole emergency department because that is yeah it's it's a bit um, it's not like we cannot analyze anything but it's more that it, that there, there's so much going on that it's uh, yeah a little bit tricky. So what what we do is we focus on one particular diagnosis, um, and then the processes are uh, are much more manageable and also improvable because yeah you can imagine if you if you have a, a, like you said um, a, a process where uh, where no never two patients follow the same route then it's it's very challenging to optimize that even if you it has nothing to do with process mining it's just challenging in general i mean imagine having a process of 500 potential uh, steps in it like yeah where uh, where do you start <laughs> so in, in terms of, of organizations um um it's uh, not it's in, in my experience it's uh it's it's uh, because process mining is getting more well known. Um, uh, it is uh, more and more people have at least heard about it. So it doesn't, of course. Uh, so that they have they have a, a little bit of an idea what what uh, it could do, and that is like yeah, like I said in the beginning, it's like transparency. What can you get? What can you gain from doing a process mining exercise? It's more insights into your processes. Right, right. And I guess um, for those that are in an organization where they're not using process mining currently, um, obviously um, to get buy-in or, or sponsorship um, or, or budget for technology and, and for a, a yeah process mining initiative, um, you need to convince. Um, the, the ones that hold the purse strings, um, most likely going to be the senior leadership, the, the C-level executives. So for the, the people that are listening, mate, you know, we've got business analysts, um, middle management that, that listen. We do have senior leadership that do listen to this podcast. But for those that are maybe trying to get buy-in from their senior leadership, how do, how do you communicate or um, how do you promote a process mining to uh, the C-level executives? What sort of language do you need to be using? Um, do you use language like process mining and business process improvement? Um, or how do you speak to them so that they you can get buy-in from them? I think the, the so I, I've been involved in a couple of, uh, of, of such, let's say, yeah, um, uh, build up of, of or kind of startup of process mining um and it's it's uh i think there there are two important things in, in doing that one is um and it's, it's kind of the obvious one um let let the money speak so um uh, it, it of course insights do not in themselves uh, are not worth anything you cannot i mean they're they're they're, they're useful to have but what really speaks is, of course, money or um, or uh, customer experience. So, if you can, 
if you can say, if you can make a, uh, make the case that we're gonna uh, we're gonna optimize the process um, and that's gonna give us this much uh, we're gonna save this much so we're gonna uh, get more customers through in in a shorter amount of time um, that's of course uh, very compelling um, but I think in on the on the uh, so yeah in the end um, you need to make a business case about about it I think that's that's the main uh, the, the main thing um and i uh, i have heard some um some some reservations around pilot studies but i think um uh, i think it's still a very um if you don't have the the the, the knowledge and or the experience in the organization then i th- i still think that a pilot's uh, a pilot project just manageable but um, uh, and we're kind of the low hanging fruit. That's that's still an excellent way to get buy in and to get familiarity. Um, so one other, uh, but kind of the, the informal, um, I think, critical factor is uh, is that is that people should um, not just the the, uh, the the money or the outcome, but also a rough idea of what you're doing or what you're trying. So if that it's it's not like magic. It's um, it's uh, we're gonna analyze the processes using data from our own systems, um, and we what we need uh, or, or what we need is um, we need time and, and, and manpower to extract that data and to analyze it, and maybe a bit of outside help in that. Um, uh, but what we are gonna gain is uh, a detailed knowledge of of what the organization is currently doing, and I think. If you can can make that uh, that that case even on a very small pilot study, um, that can really show off the value of process mining and get you buy-in in the organization. That that is what we have seen. Yes, yes, right, right. And um, obviously, over the last um, eighteen months, uh, the world has kind of been thrown into a bit of chaos. Um, and uh, obviously COVID has disrupted a lot of organizations. It's disrupted uh, supply chains. It's disrupted, um, I guess, centralized work, work um, and all working from the, the one location. Um, for some organizations, it's, it's uh, cr- created the environment for them to thrive or to come up with new and innovative ideas. Um, but how has process mining played a part over the last 18 months. Um, do you think that process mining has um, been driven up the priority list? Um, do you think more organizations are being forced to um, use process mining to analyze what's actually going on? Or, or do you feel like it's it's uh, seen as a little bit like a, a cherry on top? Um, you know, let's cut our costs. We don't need to worry about process mining for now. But what have you been noticing? Um, I think a lot of... Um organizations have been um, like the the, the, the the kind of organizations that got very busy um, they have to uh, they have had to adapt uh, to this new situation so I think that has kind of unleashed uh, a lot of, of creativity around um, uh, around processes so if I, if I look in my uh, in my own environment, the university, um, COVID for us was a very, very busy time because, yeah, from one week to the next, we were like, oh, you cannot come to campus anymore. Your students cannot come to campus anymore. Um, but we still, yeah, we, we cannot stop. Uh, we cannot stop the educational processes. And of course, a lot of organizations, you, you cannot just say we, we stop here. So, um, yeah, we had to uh, um, uh, kind of, uh, adapt uh, to this new situation and thereby kind of yeah um, I would say a, a lot of processes that that were a bit little bit inefficient before that got suddenly really really smoothened out and streamlined simply because people didn't have time to to uh, to do things and th- there was no way you could go with a paper form to 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 a desk somewhere so that um, so th- suddenly a lot of things became uh, became much easier processes were simplified so I think it has had a, a large influence um, well in in the in the heat of the moment of course um, uh, I, I don't think that that well 
Well, in, 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 some, in some ways, of course, still these decisions were informed. Like we have this many students that cannot attend their exam now. Well, basically all of them, or there's people stuck abroad. We cannot ask them to, 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 do, to do certain types of assessment. So we were um, um, that, so that kind of data driven kind of took up. Um, and I think in the long run, um, you, you see that that, 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 that spirit of um, the processes should not stand in the way of what we actually want to achieve. I think that has, that has lingered around uh, in, uh, in, in quite some organizations. So I, I do think that, uh, that, that now is, is the moment to pick that up. So now the, the initial rush is, is gone. Um, we, we slowly, um, well, in some jurisdictions, <laughs> cutting out of lockdown. Um, so things are gonna get kind of are gonna get to normal to normal, and I think process mining can now especially help to uh, to to identify if you if you look back at this crazy period, where did we did we uh, stand up and which steps were uh, were were dropped because actually we didn't really need them. Well, that is that that kind of momentum. I think process mining can can support that now at this moment uh, very very strongly. Mm. Yeah. It would be good if we, uh, uh, if we, uh, like you know, if, if all organizations come out of this 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 crisis stronger and, and more more streamlined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's great. And um, just looking at um, process mining from an industry perspective, um, is is um, process mining is there a, is there a particular industry that is ripe for process mining that that you know they've got good data traditionally they've got good data there um, and and they'll see significant value um, and, and how does process mining differ um, or, or change in in terms of the industry that it's being used in uh, are there some industries that are traditionally very paper-based and so you know it's uh, process mining hasn't really been explored in in that particular industry but um, over here we're seeing a, a lot of people diving into process mining from from this particular industry um, we see a lot of um, uh, of, of interest uh, currently especially from from healthcare so mm -hmm um it's it's a little bit of, of guesswork for me why that is um so um my, my my best guess is that healthcare is suddenly in the focus of attention because of covid um and that means that they have more i mean they have to optimize processes maybe but that that's a guess um so um what what healthcare is um is uh, specifically where we I uh, already talked about that for a little bit. Um, there can be a huge variety in, in ways that people go through, uh, go through the process, so how patients are treated. Um, we, um, that also changes the, the way process mining needs to, uh, needs to adapt to that slightly. So we, um, um, like a, a model, um, like, in, in the traditional sense, process mining is make a model, um, study that for things that are um, not or that stand out to the main experts or that, that seem like a bottleneck. That's something we can do. Um, but in, in, if, the, if there's so much variety in the process, then that is not possible. Of course, you cannot look at a model of 500 activities, it's just not just not feasible. It doesn't fit on your screen even. So the um, the um, the what we uh, what we do there is um, we we study not so much the process model but rather can we um, look at the process in certain ways such that we still can find uh, like uh, we can we still can find analysis or insights um, but without looking at the um, at the the, the 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 process manually so I think that is a driver. Uh, at least for us from academia to to come up with uh, with with techniques that can automate that and kind of yeah bring the analysis a step further can we do that without actually people looking at it um where we do see uh, also a lot of a uh, lot of interest is uh, is uh, in the insurance world so um and like uh, uh, pension funds that that kind of uh, that, that kind of organizations um because yeah the um uh, 
their markets are rapidly changing. So in order to optimize and kind of uh, enable the organization to go with that change, um, pro their processes need to, they have to get new processes. They, they old ones need to be discarded, needs to be adjusted. And the only way you can do that is if you know what your organization currently is doing um, in terms of their processes. So there we see a lot of interest uh, also from process mining. Um, but some of the, the, uh, the, the, the more exotic, um, or yeah, at least from, from our perspective, some, some more exotic um, uh, places we have, uh, uh, we have applied uh, process mining and we see uh, an interest from there um, is, uh, is uh, for instance, airports, um, uh, ambulance services, um, and uh, yeah, other uh, other government uh, government agencies. They um, yeah, that, that that's also where uh, where RPA comes in. Um, we had a a little bit of a of a of a situation here in Australia with with automatic uh, where where people who got uh, who uh, were in a in a in a typhoon, um, their, their house was was demolished. So they had to uh, they had to submit documentation to the government, um, and then thanks to RPA solutions, um, that all the the reminders and stuff uh, that they had to provide certain documentation, where it was automatically escalated. So at some point they got credit collectors <laughs> on their doorstep uh, based on. Uh, yeah, where any any human would have said no. <laughs> Let's wait a few weeks to give these people a chance to respond. Um, so so such things um, uh, that that is where we were not involved in that, by the way. But <laughs> and, uh, 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 such 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 situations can be prevented uh, or at least detected with process mining if you suddenly see. Um, uh, a, a large flux of, of, of cases going towards credit collection, then there should be all kinds of alarm bells going off like, hey, this is not good. Um, yeah, we, sh we, should, we should act on that. So um, yeah, that, that's also where we, uh, where we that, that last one, of course, we were not involved with, but uh, the other ones that, that would be one of the, let's say, non-traditional places where process mining can still be applied. Right, right. And in talking about, I guess, the uh, combination of process mining and RPA, um, do you think that in the future we will see um, process mining automatically identifying bottlenecks and, and areas of weakness and areas where we can improve and, um, and automatically changing um, changing what the bots are doing um, so that instead of any, instead of the need for sort of human intervention or for humans to, uh, um, I guess, look at what the process mining data spits out and then work on the bots, um, it's actually an automatic process where um, as process mining discovers like, you know, oh, there's a bottleneck happening over here, we actually need to deploy more resources there to free up that bottleneck. Do you think that will ever be an automated process or, or obviously there, there are potential risks there, but um, what does the, the future look like when it comes to that? Um, I think that that is going to happen. Um, so um, like traditionally in, in the cases that, uh, that we've been involved in, um, RPA is, um, is applied in, um, in uh, like manually chosen uh, places and the bots are made uh, like um, are, are written by hand um, and I mean there are all kinds of tools to, to deploy and automate that but the decision on where to do that and what the bot should then be doing that is still yeah roughly well th that is a manual decision um, and yeah unfortunately usually not supported by, by data um, so um, well, I think on, on a path to a, to a future where uh, where RPA is, uh, let's say, applied, let's say, almost automatically, <laughs> um, uh, I would I would envision like the, the first step there is to see how bots actually work in a process sense, um, and that's also why uh, I believe um, we have seen quite some uh, some mergers and acquisitions in in process mining uh, commercial uh, in the commercial landscape. Um, where RPA vendors have, have bought um, 
uh, uh, process mining tools. So uh, the first step I think is to uh, is that uh, that process mining can help you. Um, where do do I need my bot most? So which which tasks are dull? Which tasks are are really straightforward? Um, uh, which task can actually be done by a bot? Um, and there there is some initial research on that. But um, the, then I think the next step is to uh, to to better understand how bots can integrate with the process. Because um, right now the the the, the major vendors uh, deal with 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 word files thrown into a folder where the bot checks every minute, um, then takes the work, puts it in another folder. Um, of course, that that's that's from a from an integration point of view. That that's not that's not very uh, satisfying. Um, so can we can we can we somehow improve that in order to like up to up to uh, update the business process management systems um, that that is kind of handled? Because if there is a um, let let's say that we get the bots so good that they that they can handle ninety percent of the cases or even ninety nine percent of the cases then um, there must be some human that picks up the work that the bot cannot do um, right. and, and, and kind of do it by hand in the old fashioned way. Um, that's, I think that that would be the next, the next barrier. Um, I think thereafter, it would be very useful to look at um, bots that, that fail, but don't tell you. So if, if a bot notices, Hey, this, this, this doesn't fit here. I cannot do this. Or there is a system upgrade. I, bah. Um, so the if if the bot cannot do it, then we can uh, we have an explicit like exception, or it goes to a particular folder where somebody checks it every day, um, and that that's kind of good. But what if the bot um, doesn't notice it? And I mean, it's it's just a bot. It just does what it's being told. It doesn't know that something is going wrong. Um, so um, kind of detecting that and that might, well, you hope that that is, that that is captured somewhere later on in the process and corrected. Um, so detecting that and to, to act on that would be, I think, the next frontier. Um, well, after that, uh, it would be automatic uh, discovery of, of bots, and that uh, I think that that describes what you what you what you uh, what you mentioned that um, that uh, um, uh, using process mining you identify where bots should be applied, and then using some uh, other type of mining or, or maybe uh, user recorded sessions, um, then. Uh, uh, automatic bots can be uh, can be applied. I think that that future is definitely coming. Um, I also think that that we are not not there yet at the moment. But um, I, I see a lot of a lot of activity and, and creativity in the sector. So it, 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 I wouldn't be surprised if we're there in a couple of years already. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. That's great. It's very exciting. Um, and. Um, uh, for those that are listening to this conversation that and, and you've piqued their interest in the topic of process mining, uh, maybe they're they're from a you know in, from the healthcare um, sector or maybe they they do work in insurance um, and and but they're not they haven't adopted process mining yet. Um, where would you encourage these people? to go uh, to learn more about this topic and to, to learn more about how, as an organization, they can adopt this technology? Um, well, if they are listening uh, between now and, uh, and uh, like two months or so, there is a, uh, there is a, 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 a conference coming up, the International uh, Conference of, uh, on Process Mining. It is held in, in Eindhoven, the Netherlands, um, but uh, they also offer... Um, uh, the uh, virtual attendance. Um, this is a relatively young conference, but it is unique in that um, there is uh, there are it's it's officially an academic conference, but there are usually more um, uh, more attendees uh, from industry than from process mining. So it's an, an excellent place to learn about what is going on. There will be there will be tutorials. There will be uh, process mining vendors present. Um, so uh, I would recommend uh, if, if you want to get to know process mining um, to, to have a go at that conference. Um, uh, and of course, there is the, there is the very um, accessible uh, 
uh, book by Will van Aals from 2016. It's a little bit technical, but it gives you a nice, uh, a nice introduction in, in what is currently kind of possible, even though it is from a couple of years ago. Mm, that's great. That's fantastic. Uh, well, Sandra, I just want to thank you for sitting down with me today and having this conversation. I've, I've certainly been gleaning a lot from this conversation. I've been taking a ton of notes um, and, and learning a lot more about uh, this topic of process mining um, and how it can be practically used and implemented um, in, you know, real world use cases and, and scenarios. So I just want to thank you for sitting down with me and having this chat today. Thanks, Daniel, for having me. It was a pleasure. Great. Well, we'll stop the official recording there.